Hey guys, well I'm finally back with a new video. It's been about four months since I did a video. The last one I did was the clown review. And I also, um, once before that were the um, best and the worst horror remakes. So I've been wanting to do this for um, a couple of months now. <clears throat> and I'm sure you already know what it is. It's um, going to be the worst and the best horror sequels for this video. Well, it's going to be um, split down into two videos. This one is going to be the worst horror sequels. And the next one is going to be the best horror sequels. I mean, I know I said I was going to be doing this for a while, but I haven't had like time as of lately due to like picking up more hours at work. And when I had had free time, I just wanted to relax, just rest a bit. So I'm sure you can understand it. And I do apologize if I kept anyone waiting. But now that you know that, I'm sure you can understand. All right, so... I got my lists right here for the worst horror sequels, and then in the separate video, we're going to do the best ones. All right, so this is the worst, and let's get started. All right, the first one I chose is Exorcist 2, The Heretic. So this is one in a long line of unnecessary sequels. This is one of the worst unnecessary sequels I have seen. Like this, I think I heard that this movie went through like re-edits. It, um got pulled from its um, theatrical release when it was initially released. I think it was re-released a couple weeks later, all re-edited. That's just what I heard. I'm sure maybe some people heard different. <clears throat> I mean, like, this is a sequel to, like, one of the best and most scariest horror movies of all time, The Exorcist. And so, like, they had to make a sequel, I guess, but it just wasn't worth it. I mean, although Exorcist 3 was decent, though, so... So I had, like, you know, a better follow-up with that one, but this one was just so bad. I mean, like, um, like, this one was just about Reagan, Linda Blair's character from the first movie, being taken to, um, a hospital for, like, study to figure out what happened when it's quite obvious she was possessed. I mean, like, really? And there was James Earl Jones in a locust costume? Oh, that was just ridiculous. Alright, so the next one I chose, this is one of those guilty pleasure movies. I know this movie really has a fan base. I mean, heck, I kind of like this movie as well because of how bad it is. I mean, it's a movie I can laugh at, but overall it's one of the worst sequels and one of the worst movies of all time, and that's Troll 2. I mean, well, what can I really say about this movie? It's um, got some of the worst acting I've ever seen, especially the whole, they're eating her, then they're going to eat me! Oh my god! God! <laughs> so, like, you know, just thinking about the movie just makes me laugh, so... I mean, like, the dialogue is really badly written, the acting, just, like, beyond terrible, the effects beyond terrible as well. But it's worth seeing because of how bad it is, though. Next one I chose is Texas Chance Massacre of the Next Generation, which is the fourth one. Like, this one was just, like, one of the biggest letdowns, like, ever, because it was directed by Kim Henkel, who co-wrote the original movie with Toby Hooper, and it was independently made, unlike, um, Texas Chance Massacre 2 and 3, so if it was independently made, just like the original movie, maybe it could be, like, one of the better sequels, but nope. Still, in my opinion, the worst sequel in that entire series. It was worse than 2, 3, the remakes, and... The um, newer movie, Texas Chainsaw 3D. <clears throat> Even though I will admit I did like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 and 3. And the remake, the prequel to the remake was, it was okay. And I have a little, a little guilty pleasure for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. <sighs> okay, the next one I po put on here is Birds 2 Land's End. Another unnecessary sequel to an Alfred Hitchcock masterpiece. Birds, like the original Birds was like, you know, a really good, like, suspenseful movie, basically about, um, nature getting back at us. This one didn't really feel too much of that, though. It didn't really have the suspense of the original movie. They have Tippi Hendren making a cameo as a completely different character. <sighs> Which I just thought was just cheesy right there, because if they had the original actress, why not make her the same character? Like, um... Because, like, it kind of felt like it was a standalone sequel, which I didn't have a problem with that. But then, like, you know, towards the end, like, during the last, like, half hour, they mentioned the events of the first movie. They mentioned Bodega Bay and the birds attacking that area. 
So if it's connected to the first movie, make her the same character. <clears throat> there was also like a subplot in that movie with the uh, main character's son dying years ago in a car accident, but they don't do much with it. And there was also like, you know, a um, pretty stupid mayor character that doesn't do anything. So, but I will admit though that the bird attack scene towards the end was, was pretty cool. And the next one I put on is um, Child's Play 3, and I know that a lot of people consider Seed of Chucky as the worst one, but I've always considered Child's Play 3, mainly because I found Seed of Chucky to be kind of fun. <clears throat> so, like, this one, like, you know, um, I chose as the worst one. Like, I did a review on it a few years back when um, Curse of Chucky came out. And so, like, this one, uh, if you saw that review, you know I think that one's the worst one, because, <sighs> like... They have, like, Andy Barkley, the main kid from the first one and second one, in this one, but he's, like, a completely unnecessary character now in this one, because, like, um, in this one, Chucky gets a new body, and so, as you, of course, know from the, um, other movies, he has to, like, tell, um, the person, well, I should say a person, his secret, and so, now he can transfer his soul into that person's body now. But since, like, you know, he has a new body now, so he doesn't need Andy Barkley now, so he just basically goes after him, like, not realizing that. I mean, like, come on, really? And I wasn't really a fan of the, um, the military camp setting. Oh, sorry, military school setting. Because, like, you know, now we have, like, a lot of, like, um, unlikable characters. I mean, like, I will say, though, that Brad Dourif was still good as Chucky. That was always the best thing in these movies, even if they were bad. <clears throat> Next one I chose is The Amityville Curse, which is the, um, technically the fifth Amityville movie. And it was, like, um, in, like, this whole series of, like, made-for-TV Amityville movies, because, like, the first one, second one, third one were made for theaters. The ones after that were, like, all TV movies, which I all thought were all cheesy, because it was Unlike the um, first one, second one, and third one, which was basically a um, haunted house movie, this one is like um, the evil from the Amityville house is now gone, but the furniture from the Amityville house is still possessed. So there was one with a possessed lamp, one with a possessed mirror, one with a possessed clock, one with a possessed dollhouse. But this one, on the other hand, has like nothing to do with the Amityville series at all. It's like a completely different haunted house movie has nothing of the Amityville house in it. I mean, like, some of them didn't weren't set in the Amityville house, but they had images of the Amityville house. This one doesn't even have that. I mean, this one felt like if they just put Amityville in the title, then the movie will sell. So this one's just not worth seeing. And another one I chose is Leprechaun 4 in Space. <clears throat> I know a lot of people, like, don't even like any of the Leprechaun movies. Some think that... This one's the worst one, something that the very last one, Origins, was the worst one, which I can see, like, you know, that one is very bad, too. As well as also, like, some people probably think the Leprechaun in the Hood movies were bad, too, or Leprechaun 3, one reason Vegas is bad. I mean, they got very cheesy as they went on. But I've always thought this one was the worst one because, like, while, of course, it was just um, being a comedy, but I just didn't find this one funny at all doesn't explain how the Leprechaun got in space. I know it was a standalone movie, but I kept that whole aspect out. I mean, there's not really much <clears throat> story with the Leprechaun in it. There was... Just like, you know, it kind of almost felt like it was trying to be a parody of sci-fi movies, which I just didn't find funny. Okay, let's move on from that one. The next one is The Hells of Eyes Part 2, and I'm talking about the sequel to the original 70s Hells of Eyes movie, not the sequel to the remake. Even though the sequel to the remake was kind of eh, but I thought this one was the worst one, because, like, heck, even Wes Craven did not like this movie, and he made it, but he only made it because he actually admitted he had financial problems at the time, and he was desperate for money, and so he just went back to one of his old movies and made a sequel to it. And you can just tell that this one just didn't really have effort put into it, and Wes Craven has disowned this movie <clears throat> when it came out. <sighs> and, like, as I said, you can tell it didn't really have much effort put into it. I mean, like, you have um, Pluto, played by Mac 
Michael Berryman come back after we saw him get his throat bit open by a dog in the first movie. He's just randomly back. Doesn't really, um, it's not really set so much in the, um, the hills areas as it's more set in like an abandoned like farmhouse and like mine shaft. It's more set right there. <sighs> and, um, there's also like very cheesy like, um, motorcycle chase scene, which I just thought was a silly like Pluto riding a motorcycle, which was just so over, over the top silly. And as I said, Wes Craven disowned this movie, and I also know Wes Craven is, of course, gone. May he rest in peace. Next one I chose is Jaws the Revenge, the fourth Jaws movie. And, like, this is also, like, one of those unnecessary sequels, because Jaws is a movie that did not need a sequel. Even though I did like Jaws 2, even though it wasn't as good as the first movie, but Jaws 3 and 4 were just bad, and... I just thought the fourth one, the Jaws the Revenge, was worse than Jaws 3. Because while, um... Because I still found Jaws 3 to be kind of fun. Like, so, had that for it. This one didn't even have fun in it. <clears throat> like, you know, the shark was very, um, fake-looking. And, like, um... I didn't like that, um... Chief Brody's wife from the, um, first and second movie has, like, a psychic connection to the shark. And I, um... <clears throat> I also didn't really like the whole aspect that it's like, is the shark supposed to be like, um, hunting the Brody family, or is it just hunting randomly? It's just very confusing. The next one I chose is, um, Hellraiser Inferno, which is the fifth Hellraiser movie. I know a lot of people think Revelations is the worst one, and it's a little understandable, even though I actually personally did like that one. But I just thought this one was the worst one because, like, Pinhead was barely in this one. I can only remember him being in two scenes of the movie. And he um, doesn't really get to do much in those scenes. I mean, it's more sent around a um, detective. So it had, like, more of a Max Payne feel than a Hellraiser feel to it. And it was mostly just boring as well. <clears throat> the next one I chose is Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Like... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just clearing my throat. Sorry if I annoy you there. So, like, um, I chose this one as the worst one because, like, it was just a complete mess of a movie. I mean, I know they were trying to do something different with the series because the series was just getting cliched as it went on. But I just felt this just didn't work. I mean, I know Jason is supernatural and he can't, can't be killed. But he was never a, um, like, a, a possession um, heart demon of any sort. I mean, like... Like, as if he could possess people, why didn't he possess people in the other movies, then? He didn't possess anyone in the second movie, third movie, fourth movie, fifth movie, sixth movie, seventh movie, or even the eighth movie. So how does all of a sudden he has possession powers now? I do like, though, the gore effects in the movie. I also do like the look of Jason. But that's really it, though. I didn't really like anything else about it. The next one is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. <clears throat> This is the sixth Nightmare on Elm Street movie. And, like, just this one was just all, all that cheesy. I mean, it wasn't taken serious at all, which is, like, the worst thing they could do. I mean, I know it was getting um, comedic as it went on. Like, first one, second one were serious. The third one, like, was serious, but it also had some comedy in it. The fourth one was, like, you know, um, a balance of, like, serious and funny. The fifth one was more funny than it was serious. And this one was just all out. Like, just comedy. Nothing scary about it at all. It was just a complete comedy. <clears throat> I mean, there was Freddy turning his glove into the power glove, him playing video games, him showing up on a drug commercial, <clears throat> him doing a um, Wizard of Oz spoof. Like, it was just all, all that stupid. The next one is Halloween Resurrection, another unnecessary sequel, because Halloween H2O... That just, like, you know, gave good closure to the Halloween series, and they should have just ended it with that one. It had a perfect ending, and they ruined it with this one. And they could have done something else besides, like, you know, him killing Laurie, then going into a completely random story. They could have had some continuations to H2O, but they didn't even do that. So, it was clearly made for a paycheck. To me, I kind of feel like it doesn't even exist in the series. Like, I try to ignore it as best as I can. 
for good reasons too. The next one is American Psycho 2. <clears throat> so like, you know, I first I thought this was going to be a standalone sequel, but it's apparently connected to the first American Psycho. Basically, Patrick Bateman gets killed by a little girl. Like, that was just the most stupidest thing in this movie, because Patrick Bateman was like a brutal serial killer in the first movie, and then he gets killed off just like that. And so, then it um, continues with a um, new girl played by Mila Kunis, and like, so she basically becomes a psycho after killing Patrick Bateman. I mean, there... The death scenes in this movie, the kills were just so stupid. I mean, she strangles a guy with a condom. Yep, you heard that correctly. She strangles a guy with a condom. So, I was not a fan of the killer in the movie. I wasn't a fan of the kills at all. And it's one that I just also, like, think doesn't exist. The next one is Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Now, this was, like... Also, just a cash-in sequel because the Blair Witch Project was so successful. <clears throat> but this was a standalone movie, birth centered around characters that were just fans of the movie, trying to like you know catch the Blair Witch on film, like exploring the locations. Then all of a sudden, they wake up with no memory. So like, <clears throat> so now they have to like you know figure out what happens. Like, and so I was not a fan at all of the characters in this one. I wasn't a fan of the acting at all. They were all just very bland actors, weren't interesting. I also wasn't a fan that it was filmed like a regular movie because the first one was a found footage movie. This was a regular movie. And the ending was also pretty confusing as well. Okay, and final one I chose is Howling 7. What can I really say about this one? Like, this one was, like, you know, by far the worst Howling movie in the entire series. I mean... I will admit, like, none of the sequels are really all that good. The first one was, like, you know, good as it was. The second one was really cheesy, but it was kind of still fun, though. The third one was also very cheesy as well, but not in a good way either. The fourth one was just a rehash of the, of the first movie, just done very badly, very boring. The fifth one, though, was decent, though. So, that one was decent, give that one. Sixth one was okay. And, um, seventh one, though, was just just all out stupid. I mean, like, because after the second movie, like, the first one and second one were the ones that were connected. After the second one, they were just being, like, standalone sequels. <coughs> no connections to the previous ones whatsoever. But this one was, like, making it out that they were all connected. So it was, like, spending most of its time just connecting all the movies when they should be focusing on a story. And you don't even get to see the werewolf until the very end of the movie. So... It was just boring, like, times it was just trying to be funny, and it was just a bunch of, like, country singing in a couple scenes, so not much werewolf going on, and overall the worst one in the entire series. Alright, and that's all for the worst horror sequels list. Next one will be the best ones, and I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later!